Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Crypt13 and in today's video we're going to be talking about Zhao's artifact build sets and all of the possible good team comps that he can use. Alright, let's go over Zhao's potential artifact builds. He actually has quite a few different artifact builds that he can go with. So the first artifact build is to go with a 2-piece Viridescent Venerer with a 2-piece Gladiator. This will increase his animal damage by 15% and his attack percent by 18. This is by far one of his most flexible and probably one of his better artifact set builds. I've seen people recommend 4-piece Gladiator, although I would not really recommend it because it does not enhance his plunging attacks, and his plunging attacks are a big part of this kit. The next set that you can think about using is either a Thunder Soother or a Lava Walker set. This artifact set build is quite unorthodox, but it works pretty well. This artifact set will give him 35% extra damage whenever he damages an enemy that is affected by either Electro or Pyro, depending on the artifact set. So in order to utilize this artifact set, you need to have a support character that can consistently and effectively apply either Pyro or Electro, like Beidou or Shangling. And the reason the reason why this is actually pretty effective for Zhao is because he can swirl the element and spread it to all of the enemies within his range. So once all the enemies have the element applied onto them, all of Zhao's damage is going to be amplified by 35%. Another artifact set build that you can use, which is probably a little bit more meme but definitely possible is to run four piece blizzard set. You're gonna have to run him in a freeze comp or in a comp that is able to easily apply cryo. Ganyu and Kaya are both great support characters for this and we'll go into a little bit more detail on these team compositions later on in the video. The 15% extra cryo damage is going to be wasted but that's okay because the main point of this build is to just get the extra crit rate. So this is actually not a bad build to go for if you are really lacking in crit rate. The Noblesse Oblige artifact set does not work on Zhao. It would have been interesting if it gave his burst maybe an extra 20% more damage bonus, but it does not do that. So there is really no point in running Noblesse Oblige on Zhao. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is should you run attack percent or animal damage bonus percent on his goblet? So in my calculations for my low investment free to play Black Cliff build, attack percent for the goblet is actually better. Although it's only better by around 1 to 3 percent. And this actually conceptually makes sense because he's already getting tons of damage bonus from all of his skills and his passives. So running attack percent on the goblet makes sense because the basic formula for calculating damage is spread across the scaling on your skill damage, your damage bonus, and your attack power. So conceptually, if we can divide all three of those numbers so that all of the percent is roughly the same, then that's how we are going to maximize Xiao's damage. I've given this example in my videos before, but you can kind of think of the damage formula as a cube. So let's say we're working with a total of 12. If we multiply 4 by 4 by 4, we end up with 64. But if we change up the number so that it's 2 times 4 times 6, we end up with 48. So hopefully this example makes sense as to why running attack percent actually makes sense for increasing his damage. So depending on the artifact set that you decide to run Zhao with, this is going to determine which kind of team comp you should run. So let's first talk about the two-piece Venerer and the two-piece Gladiator set because since this is going to be his most flexible artifact set, the characters that I outline for his team comp with this artifact set is going to give us a good foundation to build his team. So to start building his team, you are going to need to start with a healer. This is absolutely required because without one, he's going to kill himself. Well, not exactly kill himself because the burst actually will leave you with at least one HP, but literally just a little tickle is gonna go ahead and bring him down. So for healing, we can go for Bennett, but he also provides damage in addition to healing, so he is definitely a great choice. We can go with Jean for animal support and healing, and at C4, she provides 40% animal res debuff. Barbara is a great choice for just basic healing, and you can get some swirls because her E skill can apply wet to enemies, although it is not that reliable. Ching Cho can provide some healing as well as damage reduction and resistance to interruption. Ching Cho also can apply wet to enemies for some extra swirl damage. Chi Chi is also a healer, but she's pretty hard to obtain since she's a 5 star. And to be honest, I don't have her, so I don't really know how she works. But she is a healer, so I'm going to go ahead and put her in this list. You can try Noel, but I think that this 
This is going to take a very specific team comp in order to make it work. Perhaps some kind of sub DPS team where you swap between Zhao DPS and Noel DPS. It definitely sounds pretty interesting and kind of fun, so if I can C6 my Noel, I might give this team a try. Once you've got your healer out of the way, you're going to need a battery, especially if you don't have energy recharge on him from your substats or from your weapon or from your sands. A battery is definitely going to be needed in order to keep uptime on his burst. So first, let's start with his animal batteries. I think these are going to be the best because it's the most effective way for him to regain energy. Gaining an animal elemental particle will regenerate his energy three times more effectively than any other elemental particle. Jean is a great animal battery because she can generate two to three particles on a six second cooldown. Sucrose is pretty good. She can generate four average particles with a 15 second cooldown and this matches pretty well with Xiao's burst because his burst also lasts 15 seconds. Sucrose's burst can also pull enemies closer together so that you can get everyone within range of his plunging attack AoE. The animal MC can generate between 3 and 4 particles with an 8 second cooldown on the hold version of her elemental skill. And she also has animo shred, so she can reduce the animal res on the enemies that she hits with her ultimate skill. Venti is also another choice. He can generate 3 particles with his tap at a 6 second cooldown or about 4 particles with his hold version at a 15 second cooldown. And this again matches pretty well with Xiao's burst duration. Some non-animal batteries we can consider are Fischl, Albedo, and Zhongli since these guys are all off-field energy batteries. And a C4 Albedo actually increases your plunging attack damage by 30%. And Zhongli's new buff provides more elemental shred by 20%. And Zhongli's shield can help protect Zhao and help Zhao to continue to spam his plunging attacks pretty safely. So definitely good choices there. And so now that you have chosen your healer and your battery, now we can get more creative with the final slots in our team. So let's start to think about which elemental resonances we can utilize. Starting with the cryo resonance, this is great for extra crit rate. You can potentially hit 100% crit rate with this resonance. Kaya ult and Ganyu ult, for easy swirls and cryo application, or Diona for healing, and with the right positioning, you can stagger lock the enemies inside of her healing field. We can go with a Pyro Resonance because attack bonus is always great. Running Shangling and Bennett is probably a good Pyro Resonance team for easy Pyro Swirls and good healing and good extra attack bonus. Geo Resonance is pretty good because the new buffs are pretty good and shields will help him spam his plunge attacks more safely. And the extra damage from having a shield on you is extra damage, so no one's going to complain about that. The only healer that we have for Geo is going to be Noel. So unless you're running Noel, this means that running Geo Resonance is going to take two slots and you're going to need another healer to fill the final slot in your team. That healer will also need to be of another element to create crystallized reactions. The Animal Resonance is going to give you a 5% cooldown and better energy recharge because you're going to be absorbing animal particles from his teammates. The 5% skill cooldown is going to reduce his E skill from 10 seconds to 9.5 seconds and although this doesn't seem very much it's going to help you keep maximum uptime on his e-skill passive which is something that i mentioned in my previous video so if you don't know how that works i definitely recommend you watch that video on how to keep maximum uptime for maximum damage on his e-skill you also get a nice 10 percent movement bonus so there's that as well hydro resonance i would just not even worry about this. It gives you extra healing, but yeah, we don't really care about that to be honest. Electro Resonance is not that great, but we can consider using it if you decide to run a Thunder Soother set, but I don't think this is necessary if you are already running an animal support character. So now that we've talked about the potential resonances that he could use, let's talk about the other artifact sets that he could use. These other sets are going to be Thunder Soother, Lava Walker, or Blizzard Strayer set. So let's first start with Thunder Soother. In order to get the most out of Thunder Soother, we're going to have to make sure that we apply Electro onto our enemies as effectively as possible. So I think our best choices for this is either Beto or Fischl. Beto's ult will trigger a chain of lightning bolts between her enemies and at C2 this can actually jump between two more enemies. So a C2 Beto is going to be very valuable for this kind of build. Just be aware that in order to trigger this chain lightning you have to use a normal attack or a charge attack. 
So that means after you do a plunge attack, make sure you do a normal attack or a charge attack before doing another plunge attack. With Fischl, it'll be a little bit easier because she is completely self-sufficient and off-field, so all you have to do is summon Oz and make sure you are within Oz's range so that he can apply Electro onto an enemy, and then allow the Swirl to spread the Electro element to all the enemies around you. Next is the Lava Walker set, so in order to spread Pyro around pretty effectively, I think that Shang Ling is probably best suited for this and her ult. This pretty much works the same way as Fischl, just let the ultimate rip and let the swirl take care of spreading the pyro element across all of the enemies. And then I think that if you want to run this set, running Shangling with Bennett for the pyro resonance is going to be really good, because Bennett can be used as your healer and give you a ton more attack. And this leaves your last slot to be pretty flexible. Next is the Blizzard Strayer set, and in order to capitalize on this, we want to apply Cryo or Freeze on our enemies. So the best characters for this is going to be Xingqiu, Barbara, Ganyu, and Kaya. Xingqiu's ult and his E skill is pretty great for applying the wet status. Just be aware that his ult functions like Beidou's, so you will have to do a normal attack in order to trigger the swords. Xingqiu is also a source of healing, damage reduction, and interruption resistance, which means it is a little bit safer for Zhao to just spam his plunging attacks. And so if you decide to go with Xingqiu, we're going to have to bring our Cryo Applicator to freeze the enemies. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Kaya and Ganyu's ult are both great for freezing enemies that are wet. You'll just want to make sure that you build both of these characters for enough energy regeneration so that you have really good uptime on their ultimate skills to keep the freeze uptime as high as you can. Ganyu's E skill is also pretty good because it'll taunt the enemies and keep Zhao relatively safe to allow Zhao to continue to spam plunge attacks. Although if your enemy enemies are already frozen, it doesn't really matter. Alright, and the final section for today's video is going to be his matchups. So let's do a rundown on it. His matchups pretty much depend on whether or not he can stagger lock his enemies with his plunging attacks. If he can, then Zhao is really good. But if they fight back, then you can't spam your plunges brainlessly. So let's start with solo type enemies. So enemies like Ruin Guards and Ruin Hunters. So for Ruin Guards specifically, you can actually disable them with your E skill by jumping and hitting their eyeball in certain specific situations. Although the disabled state on Rune Guards kind of has a weird hitbox, so it can be hard to hit with both plunging attacks. But otherwise, Zhao is pretty good against these kinds of enemies. Similarly to Ruin Hunters, it's way easier to hit with both plunging attacks, although getting them to become disabled is going to be much harder. You're definitely going to need an archer for that. Sisson Mages and Fatui Agents are easily staggerable. However, their hitboxes are kind of small, so you probably won't be hitting with both plunging attacks. Now, when it comes to multiple enemies, Zhao really, really shines. So against a group of hilly churls, treasure hoarders, or slimes, the AoE on his plunging attacks is just going to clear out these mobs really easily. It's also going to completely stagger lock them so they can't fight back at all. And on the topic of multiple enemies, even mid churls get stagger locked by Zhao's plunging attacks. So a group of three or four mid churls is also not a problem for Zhao. Now against boss like Boreas and Child, you can't really spam your plunge attacks because you're gonna get hit while you're attempting to jump and get launched against Child specifically, you're gonna have to use your normal attacks instead of your plunging attacks until you're actually able to get him staggered. And then against Boreas, well, you shouldn't even try because he's actually immune to both Cryo and Animo in both phases. Now against Devalin, he's actually pretty good, although you're gonna have to find a more reliable way to actually break the shield. But once Devalin is down, yeah, your plunging attacks can do lots and lots of damage. In the footage here, my Zhao is very far from bringing up Optimize. He's actually only Ascension Phase 4 with level 6 talents, and he's doing half the HP of a Devalin on the final domain level. Okay, next is Fatui and Abyss Mages. So the good thing about this is that you can actually swirl the elements of their shields to destroy the shields of their teammates. This is obviously going to depend on the combination of Fatui Skirmishers and Abyss Mages. So for example, if you have a Cryo and a Pyro Mage, then you can definitely swirl the Pyro Mage's shield and break the Cryo Mage's shield. They're basically their own worst enemies. The only problem with this is that while they do have their shields up, they are very hard to stack 
dagger, and so they're gonna hit you back. So you have to be careful about when you do your plunging attacks, because again, if you get hit in midair with a certain attack, you're gonna get launched and you're gonna lose a lot of DPS. And then getting hit on top of HP drain is a lot of damage. And then the last matchup spread is about shields. So against rock shields, plunging attacks are actually very effective. So yeah, Zhao is actually pretty good against those rock shield mid-trolls. Dendro shields are a little bit different. Plunging attacks aren't as effective as they are against rock shields, but if there is any amount of pyro nearby, then you can swirl that onto the shield and really easily burn them. Other than that, these Dendro shield mid-trolls actually aren't that bad to deal with because when they attack, you can actually stagger lock them once they've lowered their guard. All right, so this is the end of the video. Thank you guys all for watching and sticking around to the end. And if you made it this far, then please don't forget to leave me a like if you learned something new and stick around for the next part in my Zhao Guide series where I will be doing a deep analysis on, on all of his weapon choices. So all right, until next time, see ya.